Hey everybody, it's Curse, and today I'm gonna bless you with a brand new meta for Lich. This build has hands down the highest spell damage in the entire game. With over 100 ignite stacks on our hero, we can easily get more than 700 adaptive spell damage. But it's not just that. This build also runs max armor. 80% damage mitigation at all times if you're playing it correctly. Even better, you have two mobility skills in Reap and Transplant, so you can zoom across the map. It's one of the fastest monolith farming builds in the entire game. And unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to push up monolith too high, but I can easily do Corruption 300. And the other special thing about this concept that I'm introducing here, I've actually tried three different iterations for this build. If I were to include all three in this video, it would make it too long. So I'll be splitting it up into three separate parts. Welcome to the new meta. Irashemase. This build is a little bit complicated, so we're going to go over the skills and the itemization before we jump into the skill rotation with the dummy. So first off, the most important skill, the one that makes everything fit together for this build is Spirit Play. In particular, this node is the most important one for this build. We're applying five bleed stacks on our hero. With the special unique gloves, we convert that from five bleed to five ignite. And that makes it so that we can hit 100, 120 ignite stacks, giving us 600, 700 adaptive spell damage. So you must have this node maxed out for this build to work efficiently. So once we have that, all we need to do is max our cast speed and spam spirit plague. So here's 60% cast speed, amazing skill node right here. And the other one that you really have to max out is toxic transmission, three poison stacks per cast. And this is our defensive tool. This node, together with Soul Feast, is how we hit max armor. So make sure to get it. Frailty on bosses is really strong, so you want one point in here. And then the rest doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you want. This node is interesting. However, keep in mind that we're running like six, 700 spell damage. So adding another 50 or 100 from int doesn't really do much. Next, let's do Reaper form. The important nodes to, do, to mention here are getting a mark for death chance or the enemy to reduce their resistances by 25%. You must have this one. And then if we want to run dual movement skills, you want to grab this one right here, unholy domination. Crit multiplier and crit chance from these two nodes is handy. And you have to have the max cast speed. Of course, we love cast speed. That's it for reperform and then death seal. So this is our main source of DPS. If you've noticed, we don't actually cast any direct hit spells and we don't really deal too much damage, damage with spirit plague. We mostly rely on death waves from death seal. Get deadlock, that's pretty standard. And then max out your death waves. The crit chance right here is very helpful to get up to 80, 90, 100% crit chance for this uh, spell and then get plus three duration. And this node right here is also a must have. If you notice during the Jora video, we get about 20 stacks of damned because of our items and this node. And that translates to triple damage for death waves. So make sure to grab it at least one point. You don't necessarily need more than one point. And then finally, just one value point in Hungering Souls to apply Armor Shred and Necrotic Res Shred if you happen to have that. It's a very good value point. And then our second mobility skill, Transplant. This is mostly just for utility. It gives us 30% cast speed for four seconds, and we love cast speed. It gives us bone armor, so survivability. And the kill threshold. This is the highest kill threshold that Lich has at their disposal. So 20%, make sure to grab it. And of course, <laughs> extra ignite ch stacks that are converted from bleed chance on ourselves. It's just a little bit, but it helps. And finally, Soul Feast. So with this skill, the only node that matters <laughs> is Toxic Craving. This is how we convert all, uh, all of the poison on the enemies to armor for ourselves. And this is how we max our armor. So check it out. I just cast Spirit Plague a few times and my armor, boom, goes to 13k. 80% maxed out. Other than that node, I would recommend get your cast speed up, mana efficiency from these two nodes. Pump up the damage. It's actually a decent source of damage while your death seal is on cooldown. If you just happen to be in a tough situation, 
you can take down trash mobs with this one chill helps and some haste here as well but really the only one that matters is this one so you notice that in this build transplant is very much optional so if you want to have some fun and try different skills instead of transplant you totally can i tried running wandering spirits it's decent you can spec into hungering souls and make it so that your death seal has a little bit stronger hungering souls you can put a minion of some kind if you want it drain life could be interesting i didn't try that one you could do aura of decay for healing you have a bunch of different options to make this build fit your playstyle. so go ahead and explore have fun now let's go over the items i'll go over the two core items without which the build just doesn't exist and those are the gloves malian's hubris you have to have these otherwise you can't convert bleed to ignite and obviously you want cast speed in them I'm zero out of two for my legendary potential attempts with cast speed on these. And the second core item for this belt is Emulator's Oblation. This belt is so much fun. I love to build around it and theory craft around it. The sixth adaptive spell damage for fire and necrotic skills per stack of ignite on you is the main source of damage for this belt. You're increasing your spell damage from like 100 to 700. So it's a seven fold increase in DPS. You also get Frenzy at all times, which is a 20% increased cast speed, increased ignite duration so that your ignite stacks last longer, and you apply extra ignite stacks on yourself when you use a fire or necrotic skills. And if you really overdo the ignites and the am stacks, you can cleanse all ailments on potion use. So use your potions carefully because you're taking out your DPS whenever you pop a potion. Other than those two core items, this Marina's Lost Soul is best in slot hands down you can see i've got tier 7 cast speed plus another 17 percent cast speed that's 65 percent cast speed folks and the other really useful thing about marina's lost soul is that you are damned when you cast a spell so while we are spamming spirit plague we're damning ourselves and benefiting from this doom Corp skill node this wand is amazing for this build next i've got the highest cast speed offhand in the entire game and I think this is the first build that is actually using Scales of Etera as best in slot. <laughs> and ironically enough, we don't run any fire or lightning skills. <laughs> You've got another 43% cast speed increase right here. And most importantly, high spell critical strike chance. You have to have that. Here's an honorable mention. This is a decent alternative. Just as good, really. In terms of chest piece, I really like Titan Heart. It makes our hero quite a bit tankier. Unfortunately, we don't benefit from the 15% less damage taken because we're not wielding two-handed. But 40% health is significant. And you can see I'm running 300 armor on it. And flat armor is essential for this build because that gets scaled with Soul Feast. And critical strike chance so that we can get as close to 100% crits as possible. Here's an alternative for your chest piece, prism wraps. The big thing to note here is 30% less elemental damage taken. And that applies to the ignite stacks that we keep applying to ourselves. So if you don't want to die to your own ignites, you can try this armor. Helmet, you want increased spell damage for the base type. And you'd really need extra death seal skill points. For the second prefix, I would recommend shared crit strike chance or necrotic damage while transformed or shared necrotic damage. Those are the three big ones. And for suffixes, flat armor and whatever else you need to top up your build health regen per second is not useful here boots are pretty straightforward i would ideally change that dodge rating to hybrid health you can see i've got tier 7 move speed so we're zooming across the map here's another useful item more gas speed unfortunately the ward conversion doesn't really help us because we're running death seal and that prevents ward from accruing but we have 70 percent increase in necrotic damage and 12 percent cast speed here so you can't go wrong my second ring is quite powerful as well the only thing that's missing is the base type is not good. We're not running any minions, so we don't want turquoise. We probably want the crit chance ring or even the elemental resistances, move speed, vitality base rings are not bad. In terms of relic, more cast speed, obviously. <laughs> uh, the base type that gives you necrotic damage is ideal, like the one I have. You don't really need frailty on hit just because we already have frailty from spirit plague. So in terms of suffixes, make sure to max your endurance, all of your resistances, your critical strike chance avoidance, 
and then pump health. So let me show you some alternative choices for Helm, for example. Prismatic Gaze is solid. We really want to max crit chance. And also it gives us less elemental damage taken. And remember, we have 100 Ignite stacks on our hero. But you have to be able to land plus 3 or plus 4 Death Seal on this helmet. Otherwise, you're really constrained with what you can do with Death Seal. Alternative Relics. This is a good honorable mention. 13% increase Ignite duration is why we want to run this Tome of Elements. That makes it so that we can hit even up to like 120 Ignite stacks. And my favorite Twisted Heart of UK Ross, highest cast speed in the game for a Relic, more Necrotic spells. And the only problem is we're converting health to Ward and we can't run Ward because we're, we're running Death Seal. Uh, so this item is a little bit too YOLO. So don't run this one unless you can figure something else out. And then in terms of amulet, this is pretty ideal. Shred armor is great because it makes us hit even harder. And I'm running dual crit strike chance and crit strike multi. And here are some honorable mentions for other amulets that you can run. I like this one for the cast speed in the base. Here's another one with cast speed and necrotic penetration, necrotic damage, extra health. And then Oracle Amulet is really strong because of the 19% less damage over time taken. It makes it so that our Ignite stacks don't do as much damage to us. <laughs> Finally, I actually dropped an Orion's Eye this week for the first time ever while farming on my ledge. And it's probably a best in slot item just because of, you can have minus 20% less damage over time and 15% less fire damage taken. So you can reduce those ignite stacks significantly. Unfortunately, this roll is not very good, so I can't really run it. And one more mention, Bleeding Heart. You are inflicted with bleed when you cast a spell. Unfortunately, that doesn't work with Malin's Hubris. It doesn't get converted to Ignite. It's too bad because this would be a really good amulet to utilize. And one more special mention for the items is Pyre of Affliction. This item is beautiful just from the design and everything else. But the reason why this item is so good is based on the interaction of Death Seal. The spell damage of your death waves is based on the spell damage that you have at the moment of activating death seal. So it gets snapshot. So what you want to do is get up to like 80, 90 ignite stacks and then pop your death seal. And interestingly enough, the doom call skill node is not snapshotted. You can then convert those 80 ignite stacks to 80 damn stacks and you can get some silly damage numbers. I'll show you a dummy video in the background where I'm hitting for five mil crits, but this is very difficult to execute. So it's mostly just for memes. All right, let's go into the skill rotation. So if you're running a monolith, you want to make sure you increase your armor before you jump into the enemies. So you just poison the enemy and pop soul feast like that. And so once you have good enough armor, you just jump in, activate, transform, and you just rotate between spamming your R. Make sure you teleport as much as you can because it gives you cast speed. And once you have your 100 ignite stacks or close to that, that's when you pop death seal. And you can see the DPS just keeps going up through the duration of death seal. And it goes up to like 1.3, 1.5 crits at the end. And remember, you always want to activate death seal after you have a bunch of ignite stacks. Because all of the spell damage for Death Seal is snapshotted at the moment of you activating it. So let me demonstrate. If I pop Death Seal and then get my Ignite stacks, you can see that the damage is very puny. The damn stacks are applying that damage multiplier that we have in the Death Seal tree, Don't Doom Call. But the spell damage is garbage. So remember, always get your Ignite stacks before applying Death Seal. Always finish off bosses with Transplant with the 20% kill threshold. And while Death Seal is on cooldown, just run through. If you really need to fight, you can pop a few Soul Feasts. And they do pretty decent damage. Make sure to utilize both your mobility skills just to traverse the map that much faster. And let's see what we're running for idols. Basically, you want as much crit chance as you can get just to get as close to 100% as possible. So here's a great idol, health and crit chance. Another one over here, health crit chance. And then here's a 90% crit chance immortal idol and a crit chance health hybrid one. And then I'm just running health, maxing out my resistances and getting a little bit of armor. There are some other interesting idols, like this one, for example, where you can get less damage over time taken and vitality. So this is a pretty nice one, but it's hard to fit it in. And we also really need crit chance. But if you find yourself dying a lot, 
because <laughs> because of all the ignite stacks make sure to get a few of the idols that reduce damage over time taken and then in terms of blessings i just max out all my resistances from my blessings so you can see void res lightning res crit strike avoidance physical resistances and this one right here this is really powerful for this build the flat armor remember it gets multiplied by soul feast so that's pretty much it you just want to get your resistances maxed out so that your itemization gets easier let's check out the passives and i'm going to keep this section very short because there's nothing crazy going on make sure to get flat armor from this node uh, avoid all of the health drain per second nodes just because we're already pretty close to blowing up just from our ignite stacks so we don't want to make it even worse uh, get some resistances health over here this is the best node on this part of the tree necrotic penetration and then yeah it's pretty straightforward everything else just look it up and you can copy this passive skill tree if you want and then in terms of if you're starting a brand new season with the build say the multiplayer patch and you're looking for level progression taps well this build is quite unique and it has very many requirements from items and skill tree nodes that you want to hit so it's probably easier if you spec into it later on in the game but having said that i'll give you, i'll give it a try to guide you through it in the early levels i would try to get hungering souls and spec into that and spirit plague as well spirit plague can be your clear if you get that int node and spec into a little bit of int while hungering souls can be your single target and then as soon as you unlock lich spec into reaper form try to get your soul feast up so that you can uh, max your armor with combination with spirit plague you might want to replace soul feast with death seal once you unlock it just because soul feast is only a defensive tool and we must have death seal for that increased damage and i would recommend just running hungering soul spirit plague until you get the items that you need which are malin's hubris so make sure to target farm gloves if you can in the right monolith and then you can target farm soulless bastion's boss for immolator's oblation belt once you have these two you can start specking into this belt just make sure to get some items that reduce the damage over time taken so that's how i would level up through with this build and you can always utilize pyre of affliction for the build as well it's a really really good fit for it one of my other build guides for this family of builds we're going to utilize this as the core item but no more spoilers i won't talk about it any more than that just subscribe and wait for that, that video to drop i'll leave you with the 300 corruption monolith example in the background as we wrap up the video i wish i had time to push it even further but i'm guessing it's going to max out around corruption 400 and if you get really skilled at maintaining your armor really high you might be able to push it even further regardless i really hope you have a chance to try out this build because it's so much fun there's something really satisfying about role playing as a masochistic lich that perpetually self immolates and i had a concept for this build at the beginning of the week but i really didn't think it would be that powerful i thought it would be more of a meme build i went through four different iterations during the course of the week and this is what i finally landed on and it's actually way stronger than i anticipated but i am a lich noob you can see the hero is only level 98 so i'm curious what heights others can take this build to i think there's still room for improvement so see if you can push it even further and based on all the other lich guides that, that i saw it seems like lich can't kill jorah all that fast so if anybody has a lich video where they take down jorah in under 40 seconds please share it with me i'm really curious and I'm, i want to learn more about the class and i'm going to be creating and sharing two more videos based around this lich playstyle so if you're interested in seeing those and if you want to push the meta together to new heights join me on discord subscribe to my channel and keep an eye out for the videos i really want to thank my subscribers i'm up to 50 at the point of making this video so tons of love to all of you thank you for joining discord sharing feedback from the new patch special thanks to miguel kp He's been really active in trying out the builds in the new patch especially and sharing his findings on what works what doesn't given the new patch setting all right take it easy